Hello, my beautiful lovelies. How are you doing? I hope you're all doing very well today. It is a beautiful, but still extremely chilly in Vermont day. Now then, how are you all? I hope you're doing well. I know I already said that, but I'll say it again. <laughs> Hello and welcome. If you are new to this channel, my name is Shamanism, also known as Emily, hence the channel M Organically, where I teach you how to grow anything and everything, including yourself. So welcome. I am an entrepreneur, an author, and a gardener, and I'm obsessive and passionate about permaculture. So hello and welcome. If all of those subjects interest you, then you have found the perfect family here with us at the Sham Fam. So with introductions aside, I thought it would be kind of fun today to tell a story rather than just give tips or whatever, as I usually do. So this will be perhaps a little bit of edutainment, as we like to call it, maybe, or at least just a little bit of an entertaining story, perhaps. So what inspired this story was actually a meditation that I'm not going to go into that meditation. That's a whole other subject for which I don't know if I'll be able to share in the future or not. But at any rate, I've recently learned this cool type of meditation, which involves a vibration. And you might be asking yourself, well, what the heck does that have to do with story time? Well, because in thinking about that, I realized that I have quite a few stories and some of them are quite entertaining, some of them aren't. But I realized that I, I have some good stories in my repertoire and I thought, you know what? Yes, some of them might be embarrassing, but they're also quite funny. So I thought, why don't I share some of them with you? Now, this particular story isn't so much haha -ha, funny for me, <laughs> but maybe you guys will get a kick out of it. So why am I telling this story in particular? What made me think about it was actually the subject of bees. Now, here in Vermont, it is still extremely cold. Like I said, if you, if I were to turn the camera, which I'm not going to do because it's all, you know, set up perfectly, whatever, but you would see outside my window, there's also a screen, so you wouldn't be able to see much. However, you would see that there's a lot of snow out there. So not exactly able to grow things outside right now. However, that being said, it's mid February coming into late February. And usually around mid March is when things start to finally thaw. So I've been thinking about gardening a lot and I've been thinking about specifically there is a, a young lady in our community who is passionate about saving bees. And you all should be too, by the way, because bees are responsible for so many, there's, there's the educational content, there you go. If you guys aren't aware, bees, we really kind of can't live without bees. And I know you might be thinking like, well, that can't be true, but it really is. Because I don't know if you guys realize this, but almost every food you eat on a daily basis, whether or not you choose to eat that food from a package, like whether or not that's processed and packaged or not, your food came from a plant originally, most likely, not all foods, of course. However, what I class as food is only really comes from mother nature, which is plants. So real food, <laughs> sorry to those of you who don't feel that way. However, not that sorry, because the animals that you might be eating are not loving you back <laughs> because they're dead. Anyway, on a more pleasant note, the point is that bees are responsible for almost any food that we ingest, and that's the long and the short of it. So if anything happens to the bees, we're really up a creek without a paddle. So where does that factor in? So my story is about bees. <laughs> and while it's not necessarily about the importance of bees, I just thought it would be kind of fun to tell a little story. So when I was younger, maybe 10 or 12-ish, I guess, we lived, my family lived on this property uh, I don't know the size of it, but a fairly large-ish little plot. And we were surrounded by, like, if this was our little house, we were surrounded by a house here, 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 here. So in a little community, basically. And on our particular property, we had a bunch, uh, like, I guess you could even call it a little grove or whatever, I don't know, of these chestnut trees. Um, I forget for sure if they were called horseshoe chestnuts. I'll have to research that when I'm editing this and I'll I'll put in if it's a horseshoe chestnut tree but anyway so that you guys can look up if you're so inclined or maybe I can throw in here if I can figure it out an image of the horseshoe um the horseshoe chestnut tree because quite frankly if you guys haven't seen one of those trees they're very beautiful they're really big trunk trees and they grow up really big and they have really really large uh I guess they're sort of teardrop shaped but not exactly as you would think more of like an eye-shaped oval uh, for the leaves, but they're huge. They're they're really quite large individual. Um, I'm not sure. I should really learn the terminology on this. But each petal of the leaf, the leaf itself, maybe it's just called a leaf, whatever. But they're in a cluster of like five. And anyway, so they were they would have these beautiful leaves, 
they actually look rather like a Mary Juana leaves, but that's beside the point. They were not, they were big tree leaves. Anyhow, uh, they would have these clusters of horseshoe chestnuts on them. So anyway, one day yours truly was outside playing with her friends and <laughs> my friends, you know, I just spoke about the fact that we kind of lived in a little community. And so my friends were actually these two next door neighbors who were teenage, well, two teenage boys. And then they had a younger brother who was, I don't know, maybe like five at the time or something like that. He was a few years younger, but maybe more than a few years younger than them, actually. Anyway, they were all hanging out with me and we were, I don't know, doing whatever kids get up to as, as kids when you don't have a whole lot of other entertainment sources, but outside. And so I don't know. I'm, I do remember that they had this cool, like, swing thing that, I don't know, I guess their parents must have set up, which you basically just put the rope around your bum and you could like swing around the tree. And it was enough for us then. <laughs> what can I say? We didn't have those fancy computer games back then. Well, we had games, but outdoors was always fun. So anyway, we were playing and I don't know, running around and doing something. And all of a sudden yours truly, and little preface here, yours truly has been stung by bees more than I think anyone I know. And thank goodness I am not allergic because for the amount of times I've been stung, it would have been like multiple ER trips and that's no good for anybody. So we're outside, we're, I don't know, running around playing. I think we were probably playing tag. I remember we used to play uh, tag football a lot, me and those guys and like soccer type stuff. And we used to play kick the can. It was really, it's kind of funny to look back on to think that I played those games because I was such a little tomboy. <laughs> back then. And then at some point down the road, I decided I wanted to embrace some of my femininity. And anyway, so we were playing and running around and all of a sudden yours truly feels insane sting and pain in my lip. Now you might be asking yourself, well, oh crap, she got stung. Mm, my initial thought was actually no, what was that my friends pelted me with one of these horseshoe chestnuts. And you might be asking, well, why did you think that before you thought you got stung? Because my friends were kind of, they had their jerky moments and they thought it was funny to pitch these. Okay, so a horseshoe chestnut, by the way, I, again, I hope that's what it's called and I'm not mislabeling it, but horseshoe chestnuts, whereas say a regular chestnut has an outer coating or an outer shell, horseshoe chestnuts have an outer shell that is spiky it has like little thorns coming out of it all over it. So I thought that my friends had thrown a horseshoe chestnut at me and it hit me in the face. Well, let me tell you, it didn't take long to discover that no, it was a bee that had stung me right in the lip. Now I'm gonna spare you beautiful people the images of that because it was awful, but needless to say, this lip swole up to be about that big. I mean, I looked ridiculous y'all and why am I telling this story? Because everybody has these humiliating stories and they're also kind of funny. I mean, listen, if you had seen my lip, you guys would be laughing right now. And the only reason I'm not sharing it is because it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's embarrassing. And come on, you guys can imagine what it looked like. But needless to say, genuinely, my lip was like two or three times the size of a normal lip. And what I had to do to get that swelling to go down. Oh, by the way, I don't recommend this. It's one of the most painful places and ways to get stung is right on your face. It hurts. So anyway, I don't highly recommend it at all. But what I had to do was sit there. There's this sad, pathetic picture of me because I must've been having a good day out at the pool. It was the middle of summer or something because I had on my little bathing suit. But I have this picture of me just sad, sat at the kitchen counter with this giant bowl of ice water because <laughs> there was basically nothing they could really do. So I just was sitting there <laughs> with my, my front lip just hung into this ice water trying to, and I, to be honest with you, I remember that the stinger was in my lip and oh, whew, I just had the shivers remembering that my, mo my mom or my dad had to pull it out of my lip. The stinger was like proper lodged in there. You guys want to know the sad part of it too? The like sad, funny kind of part of it? I was concerned that the bee died when it stung me. <laughs> yes, your girl is overly concerned with the creatures outside of herself <laughs> rather than herself. So anyway, that is a quirky and strange story about the bees, Emily and the, the bees. <laughs> so what had actually happened was that when I had come out my front door again after, I don't know, I went in to get a drink or something. And when I came back out, 
we had, it's hard to explain, but we had this awkward side door where our mail came to. It was kind of bumped out the side of our house. So you could go out the side and just be in our like backyard yard area. Anyway, and so uh, what I didn't know that day was that there was a big old bee's nest up where I guess I didn't see and the bees got super pissed when I came out the door and they just came right for yours truly. So my advice for you guys is take note of your surroundings and make sure, number one, I mean, you probably don't want to intentionally plant too many horseshoe chestnut trees on your yard or look out for them if you do. You know, I actually wonder, I should look into whether you can eat horseshoe chestnuts because I always wondered if you took off the shell and would they be edible just like regular ones? Probably not. Don't try that at home, kids. Let me investigate it first. Don't anyone go out there eating things and being like, well, Shan said, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Do your research, kids. I also had it. This is just like a two second story. I also had this friend who was a cook. Well, he's more of my dad's friend, but anyway, he was a chef and he was obsessed with like uh, finding wild mushrooms. Let me tell you, the, the moral of that story is sometimes you, you, that's really dangerous and he got very, very sick and he could have died a few times from eating funny mushrooms. So please do your research on your foods and don't just eat wild foods unless you know for a fact that you know exactly what you're looking or you have an expert there. So with that, that is one strange and funny story from Sham's life. I'm gonna let you guys go. I did not mean to make this 11 and a half minutes, but I hope you've perhaps been entertained. Now you know a little bit about me and my strange history. And with that, this has been another Sham Saturday. I look very much forward to seeing you guys on Topsoil Tuesdays. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Spend some time with loved ones and family and friends. And yeah, don't forget to stop and smell those flowers and just make sure they don't have bees in there. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. Have a beautiful day and I will see you in the next video.